to make sure that time. Um, yeah, okay. Awesome. Actually, if we, maybe we can just use the, uh, give people a few minutes to join and go around and do some really quick introductions, just your name and brigade. Um, and uh, I'll call out people just to really quickly, um, just to do that. So um, first up, I'm Tom. I'm a member of Open Oakland and uh, the developer evangelist at Code for America. Um, Ian is up and Sabra. I'm Ian Henshaw, Code for Carry. Sabin Raven, Code for Asheville. Colin and Hashim. Colin King Bailey, Open Oakland. Hashim Tayuzi, Code for America. Uh, Nicole and Timothy. Hey, I'm Nicole Sanchez. I'm a consultant with Code for America working on issues of diversity. Uh, Tim Eccleston, Code for Nashville. All right, we'll skip Mikhail. He just says he's. Can't talk at the time. Um, Veronica Schaefer. Hi, I'm Veronica. I'm a program manager here on the network team at Code for America. Hey, I'm Schaefer. I'm with Code for Greensboro. Uh, ben, ben and Meredith. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm with Code for Hawaii. Hey everyone, this is Meredith. I'm the Senior Director of the Network. Thank you all for hopping on tonight. Awesome. I see Mailani joined and then John Stevens. Do you want to say? Hi, I'm Mailani. I'm the Associate Director of the Criminal Justice Team at Code for America HQ. Uh, I don't, John, John Stevens, are you able to say hi or? All right, we'll keep going. Feel free to say hi in chat. Um, awesome, so with that, let me get the presentation going here. Hello, everyone. Um, all right. Um, let me find it here, here we go. Awesome, so um, can you guys all see this? Yes. Awesome. Yep. Uh, cool. So, hey everyone. Um, I'm Tom at Code for America. I think Veronica asked me to step in and uh, go through the presentation here today. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you a little bit about this Brigade Census Initiative. And if we have some time at the end, uh, there, then we can field some questions. Uh, and yeah, I'm happy to sort of follow up afterwards as well if anyone has questions. Um, sort of what we're hoping to do is just tell you a little bit about um, this initiative, how you guys all fit into it, and um, and why we believe that it's really important. And then um, and then after, a f so I have maybe you know 15 minutes worth of slides here, um, and then I'll turn it over to uh, to Nicole to talk a little bit about sort of the strategic thinking of why we're doing this on an organizational level and why it's important. Uh, sort of why it, why uh, processes like this are important. Uh, to, to other organizations as well. And then, uh, yeah, if there's time, we can um, you know, address any questions. So with that, uh, let's jump in. So first question is, what is the census? Uh, very basically, uh, the, what we're calling the brigade census here, this is a series of questions we're asking all brigade volunteers to answer so that we can learn more about who makes up our vast and distributed community. We're, um, you know, we're, anal we're analyzing, we're making an analogy with the, you know, the census that's about to happen, you know, with the country, but it's slightly different. Um, you know, we're doing ours um, for some reasons we'll get into in a second, uh, but just in general, it's the same kind of idea. It's going to be a survey um, that we try to send out and get as many people to answer as possible. Um, so what are we going to ask about? Um, and, and sort of why are we doing it? Um, so we're hoping to gather information on a range of topics, um, such as uh, whether we're inclusive of all genders, what kind of day jobs members hold, um, and then information about demographics. So whether the racial and ethnic makeup of our network reflects the full diversity of America. Um, this is something you know, we've talked a lot about at various events, and especially like around inclusion, trying to create inclusive space 
and um, and this is something we take very seriously and we know that a census that a survey is not going to you know a survey is not going to be a solution in this field um, so that's kind of um, so that's kind of an anti goal of what we're doing this is not going to solve any uh, any sort of problems like that but what we are trying to do is establish a baseline of where we are with the national network so uh, in order to set goals to the second point there in order to set a goal you kind of need to know you need to have a measurement um, process in place and so that's kind of how we see this census but then beyond sort of the code for america team here um, you know hashim veronica meredith um, Christopher and myself, you know, beyond the Code for America team, uh, we really want to empower brigade leaders to do the same thing, to understand the composition of the brigade and set their own goals. Um, because we, we believe that, you know, that in order for this to happen, this has to be, you know, led by brigade leaders as well. So um, this is a fundamental part of what we're doing here is that, that it will be shared out with uh, with, you know, with brigade leaders, and we will need your engagement on making this a success. The census itself is 14 questions. Uh, some of the breakdown, some of the themes of some of the questions are around brigade involvement, how active you are, um, your sort of, uh, your demographic information, uh, like your uh, ethnicity, your, um, your, uh, your age range, like that kind of thing. Uh, and then we have a couple questions that are sort of our mission, we call them like our mission oriented questions around delivery driven government. This is something that, that Jen has talked a lot about and that our mission, that our organization is, um, you know, committed to, or like this is core to what Code for America is trying to do. So we're going to ask a few things about it, like whether you consider yourself in a tech field, uh, and sort of if you have experience doing user research and or government procurement processes, things that sort of tie in with delivery driven government. Um, and then let me check the time here. Okay. So for instance, here's a delivery driven government question um, that have you had experience in any of the following areas professionally or in a volunteer capacity? These are area, these are key components of delivery driven government. And so user research, user testing. Uh, government procurement processes. So this is, this is an example of a question and, um, and you know, there's definitely a lot of room for interpretation on these questions. So if you feel like, you know, you work in a social service industry that's not listed in these examples, then uh, definitely check the box as you're going through it. But in general, um, what we're trying to get at with this question is just a feel for how many people in the network have, uh, yeah, experience with these. Uh, and then to carry on, demographic information. Uh, so these are these are the main questions we'll be asking about race, race ethnicity, age, income, or uh, sexual orientation, gender, education level. And uh, and then uh, because so just to speak a little bit generally about the creation process. There's a lot here on this slide. Um, I won't cover, I won't read the whole thing, but just to cover at a high level how we came to create this census. Um, so of course, you know, we, this is one of our highest priorities, you know, in terms of being able to you know, like measure where we are with the, the network and create a foundation where we can improve it. So um, the way that we went about going about the thinking about the census is that we first figured we just we first brainstormed the data that we wanted to collect that we needed to collect um, and then as far as like coming up with wording for the questions for that data we um, you know we shamelessly adopted best practices from other organizations that had written up blog posts on the topics so um, we tried to not reinvent the wheel as much as possible um, and then essentially like after we had a draft of the questions and the different areas that we wanted to ask about, we then collected a bunch of feedback. Members of the NAC, the National Advisory Council, 
advised on question content and language. Uh, the there's a diversity and inclusion committee of Code for America staff members. And so that committee generously gave uh, their time and focus to um, improving the census form as well. Um, Nicole was a part of that effort. And, uh, and then finally, we kind of came up with a final draft here that was again reviewed, then ran it by executive leadership team at Code for America that weighed in. And finally, uh, we user tested it with multiple brigade members and then incorporated their feedback as well. So uh, essentially that what, so essentially we hope that, uh, that we've done our best work in producing the census that, you know, this is something we take very seriously and we wanted to make sure that we get it right. And so that's, that's like one of our, that's our highest priority for this, especially given the fact that we're asking, that we're about to ask for sensitive information. So, um, so speaking of sensitive information, uh, oh, actually one more slide first, and then we'll get back to that. Um, so the question is, how will the census be deployed? How will you or how will a brigade member interact with the census? And so we have a couple methods uh, that, we'll be rolling this out. And this is specifically over the next couple months. That first, the first way that you'll see it is in February, later this month, you'll see it as part of the NAC election ballot. Um, the way that this will go is that there is the NAC election ballot form that where you will be voting for NAC members, but then after you fill out that the ballot, then it takes you to the census to complete. And, um, you're, and it's kind of tied in. So in order to, um, the form makes this clear, but in order to vote for the NAC election, like the census form is afterwards. And you'll have to complete that as well. And the reason we wanted to do that was to make sure that we're, you know, we're getting as much, like we're getting as many people at that time as possible. And, for people who don't want to take the brigade census at that time, um, we, you know, we realized that you know, we're kind of including that in the ballot, and, but the census does have questions, have ways to get around answering all of the questions. If you, you can check prefer not to answer um, if you want to opt out of taking the brigade census. Um, and then after the NAC election process is over, we'll sort of take the brigade census form and make it its own form. And then we'll be doing a roll up push in March uh, to, to really try to get as many people as possible on that. So that the, I think this month long push is something that we will need as much help from brigade leaders as possible to, to help push this in front of members. And hopefully you'll feel like as a brigade leader, you will get something out of that as well. That you will get out you know, the information that it will, it will be returned to you, uh, you know, by, by pushing it out to your members. And then finally, uh, we'll have, uh, touch, we'll have touch points on an ongoing basis. So um, we're still you know, working through exactly what, that, what the touch points are. Um, possibly when you attend a workshop like this, you might get an email afterwards saying, you know, the, here's a link to the census, please complete it if you haven't completed it already. And, or maybe when you RSVP to an event on meetup, like that kind of thing would happen. So we're still working through that a little bit. That's a few months down the road and definitely feedback on any of that would be appreciated. But generally, um, this is how we're thinking about it. And then with any, you know, anytime there's a sensitive survey or anything like that, uh, it, I, I think it's really important to talk about how the data will be stored. So uh, just to talk a little bit about the safeguards that we'll take to care for your data. So the, the raw data will only be visible to the data science team at, the, at Code for America. Um, I will temp, I'll temporarily be part of that team to help you know, analyze that. And that team, well, the team will work with me to produce aggregated reports that will be shared with brigade leaders and the public. Um, the idea is that the raw data are individual, the raw data is the individualized bits that says like Tom is uh, a man, uh, but then aggregated reports would be something like 
in the entire brigade network, we have 50% of people are men and 50% are women or something like that. Uh, or an aggregated report could be on a brigade level saying in open Oakland, you know, 70% are men or something like that. Uh, and so those are the kind, that's what I mean by aggregated reports um, that will be shared. Um, and speaking of, and so we will use best practices of the data science, of, of, in the data science profession so that individual responses can't be identified in the aggregate reports. So that means if there aren't enough survey responses to then break down different, uh, different fields by other fields, then that means we won't, that we won't be able to show certain field, certain information until enough responses come in. So this is why it's really important to get as many people to do, uh, to take the census as possible. And then finally, Code for America will never share individuals' answers with third parties. Um, it's just plain and simple. Uh, we will, you know, we're not going to sell this. We're not going to, you know, we're going to keep it very, uh, you know, close to the vest for us. Um, the only, uh, we'll be using a survey tool called Qualtrics to collect the survey responses. And so Qualtrics is a, um, that's kind of industry standard survey tool. If you've ever taken a survey for a local government or like a research, you know, uh, like a university or something, um, you've probably taken a survey with Qualtrics. So uh, it's, it's definitely a, a company that has a good data standard, uh, data storage practices. Um, and then, let's see, I think that's oh all that I have here. Uh, um, I'll just say a, a few sure. words quickly before we hand over to Nicole. And yes. Nicole is a master, so I'm eager for us to have lots of time to hear from her and then do Q&A. Um, but I want to make sure that we thank Tom. Tom is pinch hitting for us while Veronica is very under the weather today. Uh, so thank you, Tom, for helping to facilitate this content. I am en route from another meeting. So thank you for, for your flexibility in sort of introducing all of this in the workshop tonight. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Veronica and Tom who have really been spearheading this census for our team. This stemmed from conversations probably going back to a year or more ago uh, that we've had with all of you at both Brigade Day at Summit, at Brigade Congress, um, and various platforms in which you all have lifted up diversity, equity, and inclusion within the network as a priority uh, of yours for the coming year and a priority of yours from within the, the work you do with your brigade. So I want to acknowledge that that we've heard you loud and clear on that front, that you want uh, better, better tools, better resources, um, and better intel for being able to or organize um, in a more inclusive and, and equitable way. So um, because at Code for America, everything we do is, is data-driven and iterative, uh, the same should be true for our work around diversity, equity, and inclusion as well. So in order for us to collectively figure out where we want to go as a community, we have to have an understanding of where we are right now. Otherwise, uh, we risk, I think, basing a lot of our, uh, of our intel about where the network stands on assumptions and assumptions as Nicole can, can probably tell us are often rife uh, with all kinds of, of biases that we hold. Uh, so this, this census, this survey is, is absolutely critical in, um, in sort of letting us put a chip on the table for where we stand and identifying some goals for how we're going to prioritize uh, resources and our organizing power going forward to ensure that we are in fact reflective of the communities. Uh, uh, that we serve. So just wanted to provide that thank you and shout outs to Tom and Veronica who have been absolutely essential in getting us to this stage. And thank you to all of you who have been part of the process and iterating on all kinds of different questions to date. Um, and yeah, eager to, to hand it over to Nicole, who, as Tom mentioned, um, has led Code for America in, in all kinds of different work around diversity, equity, and inclusion. She's a CEO and founder of VIA Consulting. Uh, is just a phenomenal person. We're so grateful that she's lent some of her time to us uh, here tonight. So with that, Nicole, I'll hand it over to you to talk a little bit about why, why we do some of this work, why it's important, and, and what folks who are leaders of brigades in their communities should keep in mind um, as we prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion going forward. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you, I've, 
I've had a chance to meet some of y'all in the brigades. And um, I actually got my start with Code for America working with Open Oakland about five years ago when Open Oakland decided to um, tackle its own um, diversity issues and trying to diversify the core team that was running Open Oakland. And so it's really nice when I ever, whenever I get to, um, to meet more brigades and see you all out there because I'm just a, a huge fan of your work. It's not just about the DEI. We often try and get, my, my firm tries to work with as many clients as possible who are mission aligned. And so uh, our team that's based here in the Bay Area is just really, really grateful for the work that you're doing out there that's often invisible, often thankless. Um, it, I, just so you know, I used to be an executive at GitHub and I think a lot of what the brigades are doing out in communities is like what uh, open source project managers are doing out in the world, which is sort of like invisible magic to make things happen and move. And I think your average you know, person who makes use of the tools that you're working on or the services that you're offering uh, or things that are developed don't know who did it, but their lives are better for it. And so um, I, I just wanted to start with a big thanks to everybody at CFA and in all the brigades um, because I'm a, I'm a big fan. And um, I've been working with CFA with headquarters on DEI issues for about a year now and helping both to diversify the staff that is at Code for America, uh, not both, but several things, diversify the staff that is at Code for America, um, improve and increase retention, work with the DEI committee to work on retention so that people's tenure at CFA is longer. And I'm also working on uh, training people managers. So for the first time a few weeks ago, I got to meet with all the people managers and go through what we call inclusive management training, which is basically how to be a good manager, but with a lens on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, so those are just some of the things I've been working on. I meet with Jen Palka regularly. I meet with ST regularly so that we can talk about things that are working well and things that aren't working and adjust accordingly. And so that's um, what I've been doing at CFA. And in that work, you know, the topic of the diversity of brigades keeps coming up. And so I really applaud the, the team for deciding that instead of just sort of anecdotally describing the brigades, which is like all of tech, we think we over-index on men. We think we over-index on white folks. We think we over-index on white men. Okay, we think that. We're not sure. We're not sure if it, that's any more true in one, in one place than another. We're not sure, we're not sure who, um, you know, if there are certain brigades that are way more diverse than others or if everybody's facing kind of the same, um, the same sort of demographic breakdown that tech overall has. Um, and so my job is sometimes to help leaders like yourselves, not your understanding of DEI, but how are you going to turn around and explain it to your brigade when they say, well, why are they doing this? And so one of the things we want to do is make sure that people's questions are answered about why we would do this. But just for some background, the way I like to set up conversations around diversity, equity, and inclusion um, are as follows. Number one, diversity is just a descriptor of what is. It's all those demographic characteristics that don't have anything to do with how smart or talented or full of potential somebody is, but has a lot to do with kind of what kinds of opportunities they are then afforded in the world. And a lot uh, it has a lot of predictive relationship to outcomes, how long somebody lives, how much money they'll make over the course of a lifetime, how much political power they'll have, um, you know, those kinds of things, how much education they'll attain over the course of a lifetime. So that's diversity. Equity is about making sure that we have equitable outcomes. It's not about equality where one thing equals another. If I gave Hashim a dollar, then I give Ben a dollar, and then we assume that there are, that there are equitable outcomes as a result of me giving each of them a dollar. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about if Hashim is offered an opportunity and Ben is offered an opportunity, do they both have the same likelihood to come out successful? Are they actually able to have enough barriers removed from them, from any of us, such that they can do some of the best work of their lives? That's what we mean when we talk about equity, is about the outcomes on the other side. Diversity being the inputs, and then equity being the outputs. And in the middle, we have inclusion, which is a description of just how y'all treat each other. Inclusion is the, the description of how our policies are drafted, do people actually feel included? It's the sentiment analysis, employee engagement surveys. I'm sure you've taken a million of them uh, between this group. So when you say that, and this is how I feel about being here, it's about wondering if you can actually 
be authentic at work or if you're closing things off. And that could be anything. It could be not talking about religion when you're a particularly religious person. It can be not talking about your sexual orientation because you're not sure if it's safe to be out in this crowd. That's the difference between diversity, equity. I'll, do, I'll go this way. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. And because you all work with the public, it is particularly important for the brigades that are out in local communities to reflect the people for whom you are building things, with whom you're engaging, with whom you are organizing, with whom you are showing up at city council meetings for resources and asking about, you know, making sure that the, the transportation in Honolulu, the transportation system uh, is, you know, accessible to everybody. Yes, I remember what you're working on because I've thought about it ever since we had that meeting. Um, and so that's what we mean when we're talking about why do we need to diversify the brigades? It is in large part due to who we're out there representing, our constituencies. And if we can get the input of people who actually represent the community, they can give us a more accurate um, description of how they experience blocks, uh, hurdles, or where there are open doors and where there are allies. And that is really about saying, the diversity of each brigade will probably look different when we've achieved everything we want because you all have to figure out what you need in order to serve your communities best. But you can't know where you need to go recruit more if you don't know who you're actually dealing with to begin with. And so to that end, we're trying to help you have the tools to say, hey, look, we have an awesome brigade here in North Carolina. We're fantastic, but our community is roughly 60% black and 40% white, and we've got those two things flipped. Do we need to you know, do some work so that we can more accurately represent what we've got here in our community? Um, if you don't know where you're starting from, everybody's assuming, like we just talked about, everybody's assuming that what they experience or what they see is the whole truth, and that's very rarely the whole truth. So the only other thing I wanna say about this, and then I think we should open it up for some questions just so you all feel equipped to go out into the world and, and really sell this to your brigades and get full participation, is that you will often get asked, why do we focus so much on race? Why do we focus so much on gender? Those two things in particular. And this one, you'll see questions about skills and experience and age as well, which is really important to filling out the whole picture of who's in your brigade. But the reasons to do race and ethnicity and gender, and when possible, and I don't think we were able to figure out how to do it, socioeconomic background. I don't think we were able to do that with and feel good about the data we were gonna collect. Is that right, Tom and Veronica? We decided to opt out of socioeconomics. Um, um, yeah, we do have income. Okay, so we did decide yeah, to do it. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So when you talk about the big ones, race, gender, and socioeconomics, along with other things, but these are the ones that touch all of us, you can still predict with great accuracy in the United States in 2019 by race, unfortunately, and then you couple gender on top of that. You put socioeconomics on top of that. You can predict way too much about somebody's life when you know those three things about them. You can predict with great accuracy the kinds of hurdles and obstacles that folks are facing if they are black women with low, from low-income backgrounds. The worst of what America has to offer falls on them first. And we know this statistically because of how much, um, because of, honestly of, of what public health data is telling us about what ails these communities and what people ultimately die of. So even when we say, do educated people from low income backgrounds, from communities of color, achieve more education? You can say maybe even if an individual does, it doesn't mean that all the other things then aren't still in play. And so when you look at the two top predictors of people's experience in the United States, it generally is race and socioeconomics tied. They actually kind of go back and forth as number one indicators of things like public health, education rates, and what people will ultimately die of in our communities. And so that is why we focus on those big ones. It doesn't mean that the other ones aren't important. I personally want to know how many, um, you know, how many parents I have on my staff. That's really important so I can build policies around work time and child care and make sure our benefits can actually cover um, can actually cover families. So there's good reason to ask those questions as well. But when we're talking about we want to know who we've got, we're really still going back to those big three, which is race, or, race and ethnicity, gender, and socioeconomic background, or in this case, income. 
And so I want to make sure that you feel comfortable going out to your brigades. And if you face that kind of question, which I often do, which is, why do we obsess about this? Why do we care? Why is everybody so, you know, worked up about diversity and inclusion? I want to make sure you feel like you can go out and answer questions well. And if you can't, that you can come back to CFA and ask for some support to be able to do that so that we can get really good turnout from the census. I think I'll pause there. Is that a good place to pause? And see if there are any questions about why or things you're worried about in terms of people pushing back or people um, concerned about collecting this data. Is there anything like that? I'm gonna open it up to the group. Sabra. My brigade is pretty much all on board as far as DEI is already concerned. Um, my question would be, how do I convince them that this is useful for a small brigade where we pretty much already know, we can look around the table and see how many people are black, we can look around the table and see how many men and women we've got. So that's a great question. I'm so glad you asked that question. And so I think one of the things that's important for you to know is Qualtrics will not allow you to pull out uh, tiny numbers of data that betray anonymity, right? That, that allow people. So the reason why we want people to fill this out themselves and privately is that you may be surprised to find out that folks that you assumed their gender around the table actually wasn't what you assumed or their race and ethnicity around the table wasn't what you assumed. And that's why getting this data is so important because there may be somebody there who's like, I would like somebody to know that I'm half Native American, but nobody ever asks and I look white. So here I am. I, I don't know how to bring it up in a conversation, right? And so that's why you want individuals to fill it out. Even if you feel like you've got a grasp on it, we're always surprised by data that we collect. Does that answer your question? Hey, Ben. Um, hi. Uh, so where's, where do we draw the line in terms of brigade uh, involvement? Like if you have come to a meeting, do you get to, you know, where, where do we start and stop uh, participation in the census for our brigades? That's a great question. I'll have to pass that to Tom or Veronica. Hey, Ben, can you repeat that? Sorry, I was reading John's question in the chat. <laughs> uh, like, like what's the threshold for participation in the census uh, as far as brigade membership? Like somebody who is, has come to one meeting or is like sort of subscribed to our email list or our meetup, uh, where should we be shooting for the, uh, the participation target? For sure. So it really should be anybody um, that interacts with your brigade um, all the way to, you know, your your leadership and, and captains and stuff like that. So we ask a question in the census in terms of what is your participation level in the brigade. Um, so it can be anybody that has just, you know, joined on meetup all the way up to a captain. And then um, <clears throat> on top of that, we ha we're going to be rolling this out in a couple of different manners. So the first is going to be during the NAC elections. Um, and then we're going to do a campaign in March um, to get more people to fill it out. And so we'll be deploying the census questions through Meetup. So if somebody signs up on Meetup, then they'll get a later um, email with the census in it. Um, we'll be deploying it through Slack. Um, and a few other methods. So we're really trying to capture anybody that's interacted in the brigade network. And I think being able to break down the data as well by who attend, who might have attended a meeting and then never came back um, versus who our more regular or active membership is will be useful as well. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Veronica, can you take John's question with, uh, for those of you who can't see chat? The question is, with brigade captain's approval, can direct brigade to brigade comparisons be made with the caveat of having enough responses to protect privacy? Does the brigade leadership have some control over how the data from their brigade gets used or analyzed in some way? Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Um, John, that's a great question. So um, and as far as brigade to brigade comparisons are concerned, I think that's up to brigades and, and brigade leadership in terms of how you want to use or share that data. Um, it will be aggregate data. So brigade leaders won't be receiving data based off of individuals. So I think really at any point um, you're able to um, use that aggregate information in, in um, a way that you find 
find useful to your brigade or it might be helpful to do comparisons with other brigades. Um, in terms of how having some control over how the data from their brigade gets used or analyzed, um, I would ask if you could expand on that question a little bit more. I don't know if I fully understand it. Um, I think that as kind of on the Code for America network team level, we'll be looking at the data just in order to really get a sense of where we are and then help inform decisions around what our goals are um, for the future. Um, and uh, Ian. Yeah, so my question is, we're going to get uh, aggregate data from the network. Would it be possible to just get also aggregate information about the region as well? So, uh, that's you know, we can get an idea of how we stack up in our region, and maybe that's interesting, you know, regionally. I mean, that sounds like a good idea, and, and knowing how Qualtrics cuts the data, I don't think it would be hard to do. Veronica, is there a plan for that? Yeah, there hasn't been a, a set plan in place, but we can definitely add that to the report outs that we do. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Tom, is there anything on that that you want to speak to? And we had discussed um, if we want to, you know, to analyze the data we get back from, let's say, Code for Dayton, for example, we should try and match that up against uh, what are the equivalent um, kind of measures in Dayton as a whole, like what do we need to know about, about its makeup? And that's gonna require some time on our ends to pull and cut all that data so we have something to compare it against if, if one of our goals is to help work to, to make sure our brigades are reflective of the communities they serve. So anyways, Tom, anything you wanna add on that? The background is, uh, not anything uh, Hey Tom, we, we can't, I don't think we can, I can't hear you. Are other people having a hard time hearing Tom? Yeah, yeah. we're all having a hard time hearing you. Okay, well anyways, Ian, it's a good, it's a good question and um, we will make sure we've got some, some data regionally and geographically so we can in, empower brigade leaders to match that up um, based on where they are. So I think that's, I think that's, all the time I have for my segment. Um, I would strongly encourage if you face anything while you're out there and you're like, huh, that's a really interesting question about diversity, equity, and inclusion that I can't answer. Reach back out to uh, Code for America or even me directly. Um, my email address is on here somewhere. Can you make sure that it's just Nicole at viaconsulting.com, but I'm on, the, I'm on the invitation thread. So um, Veronica or Tom, if you can make sure that everybody has that, that's great. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I just wish you all luck and I'm really glad you're you're engaging in this. Thank Amazing. You so much, yeah, thank you so thank much, you. Nicole, for um, joining us and, and providing um, some much needed insight. No problem. I'm actually going to hop off now. So thank okay. you so much, everybody. You know how to find me. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. All right, um, I will take over from here. Um, Tom was um, doing the first part of the presentation. My daughter and I have been passing back sicknesses for the past three weeks, um, and there's a lot of sniffling and coughing over here. <laughs> um, so if you hear that, apologies. Um, but I'd like to continue the Q&A portion because um, we set aside really the kind of the second half of the um, session for Q&A. Um, so does anybody have any other questions? And simultaneously, I'm going to read John's question here in the chat. I'm going to try and help Veronica to facilitate while she's under the weather. Anybody else have, have things they want to lift up? I had a question about how qualitative things will be evaluated. So, for example, um, assuming people answer the survey, you know, accurately and there's a high response rate, then you can, you can do diversity stats. But how will Code for America measure equity and inclusion um, and, and promote that or use this opportunity to go deeper? Because you can have proportional representation for your community and yep. uh, it not be very meaningful terms of what outcomes are created. Yeah. 
Timothy, that's a great question. I'll take a swing at it and then I'll open it up to other members of the team. Um, so you were breaking up a little bit. So I'm going to do a quick repeat back to make sure others heard the question and that I'm understanding. Um, so your question is, it sounds like we can, uh, assuming there's enough responses to the survey, we can get some good data on diversity, but what are we going to do on the equity and inclusion fronts? Um, doesn't seem like the the survey does a whole lot for us by way of those those sort of two pillars of creating the kinds of communities that that we want to build. Uh, I would say that you're absolutely right that the survey helps us get at that first uh, that first letter, if you will. It helps us uh, understand how we're doing in terms of the inputs on diversity, on race, on ethnicity, on gender, age, um, other other measures that we can track. But after we get those results, I think is where the the even more important work comes in is working with all of you to set some goals for how we uh, create sort of more equitable spaces in which we in which we organize. I think that's going to require um, some important conversations around resources as well. You know, what kinds of trainings do we need to develop? What kinds of access do we need to provide uh, to trainings and resources? What kind of support do we need um, to offer folks who um, who you know we might before the survey not have known uh, needed additional resources. We might have uh, um, folks who all identify in a certain way and therefore we wanna provide a tr uh, training specific to, to those folks to give them access and resources that, that they need. So um, it's a great question. Thank you for calling that out. And I think we're eager to set some goals with the help of all of you um, on, the, on the piece of equity specifically. And then on the the inclusion piece, I think we've uh, we've made some important strides. I'd say maybe in the last year, uh, year and a half or so, on our code of conduct and our shared values. Um, so both of those things, I think this uh, the network has been really uh, critical in helping to shape. Um, but I think we've got even more that we can do in terms of. Um, how do we mediate conflict between different groups? How do we talk about um, who's within and without sort of our, our systems of power and, and dominant culture? And how do we develop kind of shared language and, and understanding around uh, those dynamics at play? So I think we've got a solid foundation on the inclusion piece, but, but more we can do there as well. Um, but I'll, I'll tap um, any others on my team, Hashim or Veronica, do you wanna add anything to that? No, that was well said, Meredith. Thank you. Yeah, I think that was really well said, Meredith. Thanks. Good question, Timothy. Um, going back to John's question here in the in the chat um, about what is the specific benefit to brigade leaders and comparison or analysis, um, I I would kind of defer back a little bit to what I said before in terms of the the use of that information for brigades is up to them and also kind of circle back to what Meredith just said in terms of the the data in itself is not necessarily going to really so solve um, any issues, but it might uncover um, some information that we didn't know previously. Um, and so I think it's more so uh, an information tool to decide and provide um, insights on, um, on how it is that brigade leaders want to conduct their brigade in order to make sure that they're being as um, inclusive as possible. Um, and hopefully some of the data from the census will be able to help inform those decisions. Um, I don't know if that fully answers your question, John, um, but I think that's from what I gathered um, the, the best answer I could give at the moment, unless anyone else has something to add. Ben? I, I have what I think might be a related question uh, as far as the applicability to brigades and brigade leadership. Um, would it be possible for us to get some kind of overview for each of our respective brigades of uh, what it would mean to be representative? So sort of a, a story of the, the data that you will be looking at that's consistent across brigades to tell us what uh, our region's breakdowns are or our cities or states or whatever the kind of reach of the brigades are because I could imagine going to uh, my brigade and uh, using that as information to drum up participation in the census kind of recognizing like look this is what this is what we look like as a state 
uh, recognizing there might be a difference between that and uh, who shows up to events and meetups uh, and then wanting, you know, encouraging people to be counted across the various, uh, the various sort of dimensions that we're counting. Um, I can go ahead and take a stab at that. Um, so um, I'll just use kind of what um, Code for America is currently doing at the moment um, as a kind of, I guess, bar. Um, so what we currently do is we look internally at what is the national makeup. Um, and then we also look at what is the like Bay Area makeup um, racially and demographically. Um, and I think that's something that can be done on um, a local level as well. So maybe looking at a national comparison and then also looking um, at a comparison for your state. Um, that's generally um, widely available um, information so I don't know if we plan to produce like a report of all the different brigades and their areas and what the demographic information is. But if you need help um, getting that together, we could definitely help with that. Yeah, that would be helpful. I think, I think whatever, you know, I could imagine different methods of putting that information together. So knowing that how we are doing it is consistent across the brigade network would make it more useful and being able to say this is how you know, this is how we, this is our methodology for, uh, for this exercise within Code for America. Yeah, sure. We can um, definitely at least put out some like pillars of what it is that we're looking at and, um, and how we collected that information. Cool. Thank you. Deborah, did I see you trying to unmute? I was just going to say that yes, especially for mid-size and smaller brigades, that would be a huge help if Code for America could give us that comparison data about our eras, even if it's technically available and we could pull it ourselves, it's a case of finding the time and people and resources when we're already juggling so much else. So if Code for America had the resources to give us those comparison data, that would be tremendously helpful. Yes, cool. absolutely. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, yeah, I'll make it. Up. No, we had set this to go from, well, depending on the time zone. Um, let's see, I'm Eastern time, so 7 to 7.50. So I think we've only got a couple minutes left, but want to make space for any final questions if folks have something burning for the group. Um, John had sent an email um, with some questions prior to the session. Um, and sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Um, is everyone able to mute, please? Um, Okay, perfect. That's great. Um, so John had sent um, an email earlier with um, a few questions and one of those questions was how does the census fit with other information gathering research efforts um, about brigades. So I think that the census is going to be our, our big kind of um, data push in terms of gathering this type of information from the network and we'll be using various touch points to do that throughout the year. Um, something else I'll um, also say that we're looking to do is start kind of implementing our um, check-ins with brigade leaders again. Um, and we actually have a message coming about, out about that in the next couple of days. So as a network team, we'll be doing um, phone or Zoom calls with brigade leaders to kind of check in and, and see how you're doing on a number of different fronts. Um, so that won't be quite as, um, I guess, scientific as a, as a um, census would be. Um, it'll be a little bit more qualitative, um, but it should be able to provide some good information that will be helpful as well. I had a, another question on a slightly different topic, which is I understand the DEI um, aspects of the census, um, but there was only really one bullet point about this, the mission questions. And I'm, I'm wondering what Code for America plans to do with that. Um, that, yeah, that's all I, 
I just want to know more. As far as delivery driven government? Yep. Okay. Um, sure. So I think the um you know, with the publishing of Jen's piece about delivery driven government and this kind of being our guiding methodology um, in terms of how we are looking to tackle various issues. Um, we just want to get a sense of like what it what is folks experience in these areas. Um, I think more so as a matter of interest and then as well to see whether um, some of these tactics like are are helpful for brigades on a local level um, through delivery driven government um, because delivery driven government within itself sounds a little bit complicated and we might not necessarily understand exactly what it is um, but breaking it down into a few like tangible ways of have you been involved in these kinds of sets of processes um, helps us understand how um, maybe using some of these tactics um, on various levels could work. Does that help at all? I think Timothy might be frozen. All right. Any final questions? Really appreciate the ideas uh, and energy that surfaced so far in terms of what would be useful for Network Team and Code for America to provide. So grateful for all of you um, hopping on and sharing your thoughts with us. So I guess in final final call for any burning questions. Nothing. All right. Well, then I would offer. Uh, a request, a call to action to you all to please, please help us socialize the importance of the census. And within that, I would say our work around diversity and equity and inclusion within the network writ large, uh, we can really use your help sharing why this is important and um, communicating that across your brigade, across other brigades uh, and helping us to, to get the word out. And then I think, as I mentioned, equally as importantly, helping us do some goal setting once we do, once we get the results back uh, for how we want to organize as a community and where we want to deploy resources. So the first of many thank yous for your participation in this effort. Veronica or Tom, anything you want to add? No, I think that's it. But thank you all for attending and asking questions um, and giving us a couple of things that we can do to help you um, in this process. And Veronica, feel better. <laughs> Get some rest. Hey. <laughs> Let's let her go. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Bye.